to the window, and from both sides, right across the street, and as far as I could see, were people walking. The only sound was the shuffling of their feet. That's something that will remain in my mind forever. William Quachagon is one of the thousands of men who served our country in World War II. He's buried here on the Indian Reserve of Moose Factory Island, a few miles from James Bay. It's a pretty remote area, but when the call for war came, the Indians of Moose Factory answered that call. veterans. They left their reserves to honor their, their country and their king. And they are buried here, and we honor them every year in Remembrance Day. Lakes and rivers are the roads and highways of the north. Sid Moore grew up here, but when war broke out, he left to follow other highways that took him halfway around the world. He was one of the lucky ones who came home again. A few of Sid's war buddies are getting together. It's a once a year event, a chance for old friends to talk about old times and faraway places. I belong to the Essex Scottish, and uh, this old Englishman come up to me and says, you don't look like any Scotchman to me. I said, I never professed to be a Scotchman. This uniform made a Scotchman out of me. <laughs> <laughs> They've known each other all their lives. They grew up together. And half a century ago, they went off to war together. When it began, World War II was a European battleground, a distant white man's war. But 56 young men left the small Cree village of Moose Factory Island to volunteer. They didn't even wait to be drafted. And we're proud of the word volunteer. Nobody forced us. We were good Canadian patriots. We fought for our country. I don't think uh, anybody that we fought alongside or anything had any regrets of having us as buddies. Falaise Gap, Khan, Albert Canal. The Cree soldiers had trained together in Canada, but here in Europe, they ended up in different regiments, different battles. They didn't meet again until after the war, but life in Moose Factory would never be quite the same again. Fred Moore lost a brother-in-law and two cousins overseas. Fred himself had a knee shattered in a landmine explosion. But he's never forgotten his reasons for signing up. Well, I figured if the Germans ever come over or landed on in Canada, where would it have been? So we we had to do, had to go and do our best. Monroe Linkletter served with the Calgary Highlanders. He saw action in France, Belgium, Holland, and Germany. We always used to tell each other that uh, 24 hours uh, we'll be either in three, one or three places. Still, you know, slugging it, pushing daisies, or in the hospital. Every 24 hours, it changed. Edward Ferries was a sharpshooter, a sniper with the Saskatchewan Light Infantry. Forty-five years after the war, he still carries a gun for target practice. With every shot he fires, he remembers. War has a way of forcing young men to grow up fast and sometimes grow old before their time. Edward Butterfly had one of his legs blown off by a rocket bomb in Germany. 
the Department of Veterans Affairs sent him a plastic one. The government also gave each of the returning vets hunting and trapping supplies and a little plot of land. Ex-Corporal Gilbert Ferries built the first house on what's now known in Moose Factory as Veterans Row. Eddie? Eddie? Uh, George? George? Billy? Billy? Edward. Edward. Yeah. Well, you're a good-looking fellow, isn't he? But don't go back to them good old days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see that one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He looks younger than me there. Well, doesn't it? Yeah, he's not going to look younger than me. He looks pretty good there. They used to call me pearls. My, my clean teeth, I've got nothing. Nothing left. Oh, boy. I've one pearl left. <laughs> <laughs> Many years after the war, Sid Moore is still tying up loose ends. There's a grave here that's never been properly marked. Sid wants to mark it with a headstone, so the old soldier buried here will never be forgotten. Indian soldiers wore the same uniforms as the white soldiers, ate the same food, fought for the same cause. They, too, put their lives on the line for Canada. But when the war ended, their contribution wasn't always remembered. As a soldier, I was accepted anywhere. My nationality was never a question. I was a good Canadian soldier. Since the war, I've been questioned about my nationality and in the employment offices, in the hospital. I said, what nationality? I said, I'm a Canadian, I'm born in Canada. They said, you look like an Indian. All right, if I look like an Indian, I'm proud of being an Indian. Call me an Indian. So I'm an Indian. I was more or less just, dis just discarded as a Canadian after I took that uniform off. The headstone Sid's been waiting for has arrived. The grave of an old soldier, a veteran of World War I, will finally be marked. Harry Moore, Sid's father, won't be forgotten. There's another memory Sid keeps in his heart. A day 46 years ago, when he met his brother on a battlefield in Europe. 1944, the grueling battle to retake Europe. Sid and his regiment find themselves just a few miles from the front. Someone tells him that his brother, who's with another battalion, is returning from the battle lines. And he told me my brother was lined up along the Rhine about three miles from where I was bivouacked. And then the next day I got permission to go down and visit him. We sit and look at one another for about two hours because the, the guns were firing on a steady barrage across, softening it up for us. Softening it up for you, Shorty, he called me. The battle was won, and the war ended not long after. But even today, almost half a century later, Sid Moore's memories of war are still vivid. Memories of pain and fear, and other memories of a brother's love and saying goodbye. In those days when you said goodbye, it could be for the last time. And I knew I had to pass past my brother's bivouac area, and I'd mentioned that there was rumors we were pulling out, and he made it a point to stand along the highway. They were much younger then When they were sent to defend 
but they soon would grow old long before their time some lie in their graves and silently pray we never see war again remember these things lest we forget 